Oh, Larry Anglosano reporting for Aviation Consumer Magazine. Now, late last year, the FAA issued a long-awaited policy statement saying you can install a TSO electronic attitude instrument to replace the primary mechanical iron gyro in a certified airplane. Now, that policy number, which is ACE 23-08, seemed perfectly timed around the introduction of the L3 Avionics ESI 500 Genesis attitude instrument which is really a primary flight display that fits a standard instrument cutout. L3's Todd Skelton is going to give us a summary of the Genesis, then we'll go see what it looks like in flight. Late last year, uh, L3 Avionics System introduced the Genesis ESI 500 electronic standby instrument, uh, TSO'd and AML STC'd for Part 23 aircraft and designed also for uh, helicopter Part 27. The ESI 500 is an electronic standby uh, designed to complement a glass cockpit in the event of a failure, electrical failure or a PFD failure. Pilots will appreciate uh, the seamless transition uh, as they're used to flying behind the PFD. The basic data with the ESI 500 is what you would expect with any uh, flight display instrument or standby. You'll have your uh, heading tape down along the bottom here with a digital readout of the heading here. Now heading can come from a 429 source if it's available in the aircraft or uh, a magnetometer that would be installed uh, typically in the wing that would provide uh, heading uh, to the instrument. Uh, with the uh, installation of a magnetometer, if there's a power loss, the internal battery to the ESI 500 would also uh, power that uh, magnetometer so uh, heading would still be available in that event. And on the top of the display, you'll see the roll indicator the open triangles on the corners here indicate 45 degrees of bank and below here is a slip skid indicator. The speed tape uh, V and E can be programmed in and a variety of other uh, V speeds uh, can be programmed in at the time of installation. On the right side is the altitude tape. On the upper right uh, corner here you'll see the barrel setting which can be adjusted with the knob here or push to sync for standard and we have the ability to uh, fly uh, with a VOR, ILS or RNAV uh, with the option of a nav interface. Synthetic vision is an option. Select to turn it on and you'll see the synthetic vision which is a, f a 45 degree field of view and it'll mimic uh, synthetic vision on many primary uh, flight displays. Along with the synthetic vision, not only do you get terrain alerts, but uh, obstacle are included. So obstacle and ter uh, terrain alerting uh, via color coding. So we're airborne in the uh, L3 Company airplanes at Beach 58 Barron. Now in this airplane, Todd, the uh, uh, 500 is being used as a backup uh, to the G500 primary flight display. Is that the primary market for this display or, or what? Uh, primarily, the, it's very popular uh, with the G500 uh, market, a Aspen uh, uh, market, as well as the Evadyne. Um, any, anybody flying behind a glass po cockpit uh, likes the idea of having uh, one unit as their standby. Uh, with an easy transition, if there's a primary flight display failure or a power failure, uh, most pilots will appreciate um, how their standby looks uh, almost identical to what they're used to flying with their primary flight display. So the uh, 500 is not only going to paint towers, it's also going to paint uh, uh, land data too, right? We're looking That's at a correct. ridge here off the nose of the airplane. What's that going to show? Well what, well, what it'll show is that if we get closer, within 60 seconds, the terrain on the display will turn yellow, indicating there's a cautionary terrain that's uh, too close to our altitude. And then as uh, we get within 36 of that, uh, 30 seconds of that terrain, it'll turn red. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. So you just turned yellow on the display there. Terrain, pull up. Caution, terrain, terrain, pull up. Caution, terrain, terrain. Okay, so there's the red. Caution, terrain, terrain. Got traffic out there, so I'm going to just keep it coming right around. So we're set up to fly the ILS to runway 6 here at Bradley International Airport in Connecticut and the uh, ESI 500 is connected to the secondary Garmin GTN 650. How do you arm the 500 to uh, display the ILS? Well I have it set up here uh, to read the ILS already off uh, number 2, ILS number 2. 
that uh, is set up through the nav mode, so I can select between GPS or VLOC. The other thing I want to do is set my inbound course to 060. I'll do that through the menu option. So the display is showing both localizer and glide slip. That's correct. Uh, on the installation side, uh, the installer can install the SI500 and uh, the approved data is already there through the uh, AML STC package. Uh, so it doesn't have to go through the extra work of a field approval or uh, FAA certification. And what's the starting price of the 500? Starting price is $6,200 list price for the SI500. Uh, the options would be a navigation interface, uh, synthetic vision. Uh, the magnetometer is also an option. And where can you learn more about the 500? You can go to L-3 uh, communicationsavionicsystems.com. Reporting for Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglisano, and thanks to Todd Skelton. Thanks for watching. Thank you.